I'm here with Christian Dagenet. He's with the New Builds Network and with FP Innovations, and he just gave a great talk about some of the work that uh, New Builds Network and their research program has been doing regarding the Canadian National Building Code. So could you elaborate on uh, some of the work uh, you've done and the outcomes related to building code? Yes, the, uh, currently the National Building Code of Canada limits wood construction up to four stories, depending on, on the occupancy types. So, for example, residential buildings or office building is limited to four stories. And the uh, current requirements are based on different kind of aspects, mm -hmm. uh, arbitrary aspects that is being discussed at, as the, at the uh, code committee levels. So the team tree activities are to are, are focused on trying to find the rationale of why there are some limitations imposed on wood, co wood constructions. Uh, different aspects has been identified as to the risk level or the level of safety mm -hmm. uh, of wood frame constructions, and how can we address that through through uh, research. Mm -hmm. um, some of the research now has been uh, used to, uh, to, um, on, for ongoing activities at the national code levels. Mm -hmm. uh, there, ha there has been some code change proposal put in place by the Canadian Wood Council for allow allowing six-story wood constructions, um, residential and office buildings. Mm -hmm. um, more recently, in 2009, the British Columbia province has changed their own provincial building codes to do so. Um, so there is an ongoing activities going on for allowing bigger or greater wood frame construction buildings. And I think this just, uh, Quebec has taken an interest in this as well in changing their code. Yes, Quebec, uh, the Quebec government also announced a few weeks ago mm -hmm. that uh, through a press release that they will be also changing uh, or I would say adopting a provincial measure to allow residential mid-rise buildings, so five and six story buildings as well. Uh, it's a similar approach to what BC has done mm -hmm. uh, with some enhanced measured fire safety protection measures as well that is currently being discussed for the national changes. Regarding the building codes, will Canadians begin to see this nationally across each province? Um, hopefully, yes. The overall idea of working at the national level is indeed that all provinces will now have access to that, well, provinces and designers will mm -hmm. have access to, that, to those allowance. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's already started in BC a few years ago. There's uh, over 100 projects already built or in construction as we projects speak. projects since 2009. Yes. Wow. And in Quebec, we do have a few mid-rise buildings also uh, ongoing. We have one that has been built in 2009 as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but more interestingly, we just completed a study on historical tall wood buildings that uh, many timber buildings throughout the countries have been built in the early 1900s and are still in use today. And they're greater than what is being currently allowed in the building code. Mm, so longevity. Yes. So another great topic that New Builds is covering here at the Fiber Conference is your work around uh, CLT or cross-laminated timber. Can you tell us what is CLT? CLT is a uh, is a new kind of building system made made obviously of wood components. Uh, it is a product that is being that has been developed and being used in Europe for over more uh, more than 15 to 20 years now. Mm -hmm. And it's just recently been introduced to North American market, but basically a CLT is uh, <coughs> similar <coughs> similar to a plywood, mm -hmm. but made with two by materials, so two by four, two by six, that you you you, you glue them and you stack them crosswise on every thick uh, layers. So it really forms a really thick material member uh, from three to five or seven plies. Um, so it can up to to uh, two hundred. 50 something millimeter thick. So it really becomes a massive timber structural element. And how are you rolling that out? Who makes the decisions uh, to use a, CL, a CLT? Is it a designer or a, a builder? It, <coughs> the, the choice of materials in construction really comes to the designers. Mm -hmm. um, obviously there's some sort, there's different ways. Sometimes the owner will decide what he wants. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the architects will decide. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it, it really depends, but mostly it's, it's the designers. So architects are usually the ones 
and choosing how, the materials. And how um, are you educating uh, those, those decision makers about CLT? Since CLT is a recently new product in Canada and now it's in North America, uh, FP Innovations has written a CLT handbook. The mm -hmm. Canadian, Canadian edition has been released in 2011 mm -hmm. and it touches every building attribute that a, a structural building component should meet. So there's different chapters within that handbook mm -hmm. that touches the structural capacity, uh, seismic provisions, the fire performance, uh, connection details, building envelopes, so different kind of aspects. And early in 2013, we also uh, released the US edition mm -hmm. uh, of the CLT handbook. So that is in support of the building code to, for designers to how to use and calculate CLT structures. And have you seen an uptake in, in CLT use? Uh, yes, there, there are uh, some buildings already up and occupied as we mm -hmm. speak, both in mostly in Quebec and uh, BC so far. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are, there are some projects now in Alberta and Ontario as well that is being built out of CLT. Uh, so it, it, it is picking up slowly. And the, the market for CLT would probably be in larger buildings and taller buildings as well. So beyond those four or six story buildings that we re previously discussed. So lots of really interesting new uses for wood building products coming out of Canada. Yes, yes indeed. Well, thank you for sharing those two successes. It's great. Welcome.